last week when you learned about Git flow, you saw that we created um, our releases with version numbers like 1.0.0 and our hotfixes with version numbers like 1.0.1. .1. And the question is what do these numbers represent and why would we use such a version number? These numbers represent the version of our libraries or the application that we put out to other people. The reason why we use a version like this is because we want to follow a best practice called semantic versioning. When we use semantic versioning, developers like us and developers like other people, we will have the chance to know which versions has been changed and roughly what has been changed and whether the change is going to be backwards incompatible or in other words, whether that specific change will it break the current code that I am using right now. So those numbers gives a clue to what kind of change is going to happen. Many popular projects use semantic versioning. Examples include like React. If you go onto React's website, you can see that um, the current version as of the time of recording is version 16.4.2 and in the docs, you can see that there are multiple versions like 16.4, previously 16.3, 16.2, 16.1, and so forth. Another framework view also has this release cycles as well. Right now in view, we have the latest version is 2.5.17. And then before that is 2.5.17 dash beta. And then before that is 2.5.16. So these numbers let us know which version we can use and whether we want to use them or not. But what do these version numbers actually mean? The format we follow is called semantic versioning. You can find out more about semantic versioning at samver.org, which is this website over here. But I'm going to give you a rundown of what you need to know in this video itself. So when it comes to semantic versioning, a uh, semantic version has three numbers. So I'm going to start with 0 .0 0 0.0.0 for now. The rightmost number or the last number is what we call a patch version. Patch versions are usually used for bug fixes and there are no changes to the functionality of the code, which is why when we created a hotfix in the previous video, we used a patch version. So whenever you release a new patch, you increase the number by one. From one, you increase to two, to three, to four, to five, and so on. If you have a patch number that is already at nine, when you increase the patch version again, it doesn't go into the second number. You increase to 10 immediately, then to 11, to 12, and so on. There are no limits to the numbers. You can go up to 99999 if you want to, but usually that doesn't happen. Next, the second number is what we call the minor version number. A minor version is used when you create some new functionality in your project and you want to let other people use the new functionality. When you increase the minor version, you also increase it by one. But when you increase the minor version, you must reset the patch version back to zero. So example, let's say we increase the minor version to 0 0.1. That means we have to reset the patch number to zero and that will be 0 0.1.0. If you create more patches, it will be 0 0.1.1, 0 0.2, and so on. Then if you release another minor version, you go to 0 0.2.0. So, re so you reset the patch version again. Now, the first number or the leftmost number then is what we call a major version. When you increase the major version, you are signifying that there are backwards incompatible changes to your repository. So anyone who is using the library right now may experience some breakage if they increase to the next version. Likewise, when you increase a major version number, you reset the minor versions and you reset the patch versions as well. In this case, Let's say we increase this to major version number one, then we will reset the minor and patch versions back to zero. So this is how semantic versioning is structured. 
And if you want to create a pre-release, like an alpha release or a beta release, you can add a dash followed by the words alpha or beta. There are no hard and fast rules for the pre-releases. So you can name it whatever you want. Usually we follow alpha, beta, followed by a number to the beta if there is a need to. Usually most people start projects with a version number that is 0.1.0. .0. And when you are ready to release it to the public, you increase the version number from 0.1.0 to 1.0.0. So that's what you do. Then from that point onwards, you just follow semantic versioning all along. And that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll talk about tagging and why tagging is useful. I'll see you in the next video.